So, section 5.5, five, called the trapezoidal rule. Trap, uh, zoidal. Or the trapezoidal. Approximation. Yeah, there's an X and an I. Yeah. Math class, not English. You can judge me by my spelling, but take it into account that I am dyslexic, and so my spelling is inherently weak. All right. So something that you guys brought up earlier, and when you brought it up, I disregarded it, but. Here's this idea. We've got a curve called f of x. We've got values of x, that a and b, and we've got an interval from a to b. And I would like to find the area under that curve. You're saying, Mr. Fedor, we know this. The area under that curve is going to be the definite interval from a to b of f of x dx. You're, you're absolutely right. That's absolutely true. But here's the problem. You can only do this problem symbolically if you can find the antiderivative of little f of x. And the dirty secret of calculus is most times we can't find the antiderivative. Most expressions that you write mathematically, even ones that are relatively simplistic, you cannot find the antiderivative of. So what are we left doing? Well, what we're left doing is doing a bunch of rectangles. All right, LRAM, RAM, MRAM. And you remember them with so much fondness, right? Yeah, they were really easy. They were easy but tedious. So you would describe this particular one as an LRAM, an RAM, or an MRAM? LRAM. Which one? LRAM. An LRAM, a left-handed estimate, because I'm using the, uh, the left-hand side of each of those rectangles to determine or to make a guess about the area under the curve. Is this an overestimation or an underestimation? Over. 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 It would appear to be an over because there's more little overages than there are underages. Yeah. If that's a word. Is now. More of these are over the curve, here, 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 and here, than the one that doesn't quite make it up to the curve. Agree? Agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we've talked about ways of making this a better estimate. One way was to increase the number of rectangles. In fact, if we use an infinite number of rectangles, we don't get an estimate anymore. We get the area under the curve. Unfortunately, that's not always possible. We certainly can't always manipulate those kinds of algebraic statements that I made in those earlier lectures so that we get we can say what happens when the number of rectangles goes to n, or it goes to infinity. What if, instead of a rectangle, we use a different shape? Trapezoid. Trapezoid. Trapezoid comes to mind. Indeed. How does this problem become different? Now, let me erase those rectangles. Good try. Let me redraw this graph <laughs> from a to B, and it's something like this. And what if, for that first shape, we go to another point on the curve, go to that point, we got So I'm on that point, I go over. No, I'm, I'm making actually secant lines. I'm making another point on the curve. I'm connecting those two points. 
Now, each of those shapes, although they're not in the orientation that we're used to thinking of them as trapezoids, each of those shapes are trapezoids. I was, oh, just, gonna, I was just gonna say that if you, if the end result is getting infinitely smaller trapezoids, then eventually, is that not the end result? The end result, you know, no, what I'm showing you is that we reuse trapezoidal estimates when we actually have a finite number of intervals between A to B. And we use, we use the trapezoidal estimate with finite because those trapezoids, at least the top of them, seem to mimic the curve and have less error per interval than the rectangulars, than the rectangulars do. Yeah. It does make sense? Excellent. All right. Now, let's do something like finding an estimate of the area between 0 and 1 of x squared dx. Let's do it. Let's do it with four intervals, just like we did when we started. Right? So here is my axes. Here's that parabola and the area that I'm interested in finding. I've got four intervals. And this is what, one quarter, one half, three quarters, and one. And let's talk about that first trapezoid. Who's going to use both of those points. And re this is interesting, isn't it? In the old method, if we did LRAM, we s pretended to leave off the last point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we did RRAM, we tended, we, tended, we tended to leave off the first point. But if we use trapezoids for that first interval, I'm using both of those points. Let's do that. What's the second trapezoid look like? Make a point on the curve above one half. Where's my? What's my third trapezoid look like? I go up here. And what does my fourth trapezoid look like? Okay. So there's our four trapezoids. Okay. Let's. Uh, It would not be called a T-RAM officially because L-RAM stands for left rectangle area method. So, no, so the, trapezoid, the trapezoidal area method. TAM. How about we do TAM4 in this case? Let's talk about that first, that first trapezoid. Well, the formula for the area of a trapezoid is one half, base one, and I'm going to if I draw one of these trapezoids out on its own. We're going to call that one base 1. We're going to call this distance here base 2. And this distance height. is going to be the height. So, so, so how about 0 yeah. plus 1 16th multiplied by 1 quarter. I'm going to call that a representation of the first trapezoid. Mm -hmm. All right? The next trapezoid has area one half, base one plus base two. One quarter. It's going to be. It's going to be it's going to be the height right here. Yeah, and then uh, height, height. And since it's the x squared term, yep. And then what's the width of the interval? One fourth. One fourth. Plus. One half. One half. One fourth. Plus nine sixteenths. And that's how we use the trapezoidal method. Oh, 
We break it up into several trapezoids. Remember that the heights of the curves represent the, the size of the trapezoids. You've got as many trapezoids as you have intervals. Right? And I have a, is this around one third? I don't know. Should be. Should be real close to one third. Let's find out. Uh, four, four times, oh, four times 16 is 64 times two is 128. Well, if you really want to make it easier, you can factor out one eighth from each different uh, trapezoid because they are multiplied by one half and one fourth. Oh. So great idea. There's a one quarter and there's a one half in each of those. So let's just factor out a one eighth. And what we end up getting is zero. And there ends up being two of these one sixteenths. One there and one there. So I'm going to write that down as a one eighth. Plus. And then I got a one quarter and another one quarter. I'll write that down as one half. And then there's a nine sixteenth and a nine sixteenth. I'll write that down as a... Nine eighths, and then a big one at the end that doesn't have a double. Okay, I'm looking at 10 plus another 4. I'm looking at 14 eighths. Sorry, no, no, not 14. 1 plus 4, 1 plus 4 eighths plus 9 eighths plus another 8 eighths. 22 eighths, and I'm going to multiply that by. An eighth? 22 over 64. 22 over 64 or 11 over 32. 32. 11 out of 32, 11 out of 33 is exactly one third. It gives us a pretty good estimate. Are you okay with that idea? Yep. All right. Second slide. I'm going to write down some facts that we put down when we, we were doing the rectangular method. Are you ready? If F is increasing, L ram Underestimates. Now, typically, when I get a question like this, I actually just do a quick drawing, draw some quick LRAMs, and can you see the underestimation? Yeah. Okay. Call that. We'll just say unders. Okay. If F is increasing. R RAM over. Yeah, it overs. Probably overs. It overs the area? Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. That's there the word go. area. Yard. <laughs> <laughs> Put a space you just in cross it out. Like Alright. And again, if I can if I can if I can draw if I can draw an increasing function, I'm like, okay, oh. You know, the, Overestimates. Okay, and again, I do that because if you're not good at memorizing it, can you derive it? Be a good idea. So that's an over. Right? If F is decreasing, LRAM. Overs and RAM unders. Unders. We do we don't have a conclusion. Alright. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Alright. 
So we came up with those conclusions really early. Let's talk about trapezoidal. Overs or unders? On the increasing end, it's uh, over. Okay, well, can I go to the next slide? Yeah. Then I want to draw some more pictures. Here's picture number one. Good job. Here's picture number two. Functions are increasing. increasing. Let me draw some. Let me draw some trapezoids. I'll just do three, so that we can see. Do three intervals on here too. Okay, it's, I probably could have drawn the. Curves would be a little bit more aggressive to make my oh, point. After it's, just, it's concave up. It's oh. something to. So it's not about increasing and decreasing for trapezoidal. Cavity. If F is concave. Okay. If F is concave up. Tam. Overs. If F is concave down, tam unders. M tam. Okay, so in this case, we can't look at increasing or decreasing. We have to look at something else. We're looking at concavity. Of course, how do we tell where a curve is concave up? Second derivative. Looking for Positive second derivatives. Where do we know where curve is concave down? Negative. Negative second derivatives. Alright. Are you okay with that? Yes. yes. Alrighty then. New slide. How much time do we have left? Oh, we have 10 minutes? Okay. Okay, one more example here. A, B, C, D. Those are the points of the function at A, B, C, and D. Right? Those are points of. Oh, so All right. Yeah. We're going to do this problem three times. Oh. Is that how we have against the Ephraim. It's fine. I'm ignoring Emory and Fernando. Yeah, we don't like it. Ephraim is like a. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to make an assumption here. We're going to just kind of call this distance between A and B delta X. It's the same distance between B and C and C and D, if you don't mind. So it's going to make my life, your life, a little easier. Mm -hmm. All right? So I might say that RM is equivalent to F of B plus F A C F of A. Yeah. Makes sense. Are you okay with that? Yes. Everyone cool with that? Everyone totally agrees with that? All right, great. In black now. Okay. Uh, F of A, A, F of B, F of C. All 
Everyone totally understand that, right? So the LRAM in black looks like this. Let's get that up. Where are the yeah. points? No, no. I lost the, it. the points the are here, here, and here. Yeah, you got So over here, over here, and the last one's like that. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Let's do TAM. Yes, TAM. One half. Delta. Okay, I'm, Delta X ends up being our H, so yeah. I typically put it at the end. One half. F of A. Plus half of B. Times Delta X, right? Yeah. Plus. C, delta X, yeah. <coughs> plus <laughs> one half, half of C. Okay. plus, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Only have three. Okay. Now, <laughs> Let me factor the delta x out. together RM and LRAM. Two TAM? I want to go with two TAM, yeah. I'm going to guess that if I add these two together, I end up getting delta X times F of A. This is one F of A, but there are two F of Bs, oh, one here so and one there. And there's oh, oh, two oh. F of C's, and there's only one F of D. They, mm -hmm. So, so, so it oh, looks yeah. identical except for, <laughs> except for that little divide by two. Is that right? So, yeah, it's two two. How can we summarize this? Equals to RAM. RAM plus LRAM. That says LRAM. LRAM. <laughs> equals to TAM. You could say it's or equal to. Two. You could say that it's equal to TAM. To, to TAM, or I'd rather just say. <coughs> Wait. I take two numbers, I add them together, and I divide them by oh, two. No. Average. Average. <laughs> All right. So, con conclusion. Conclusion. The, tra the trapezoidal estimation is the average of the RM and the LRM. Okay. And the reason why it's like someone said, why don't we take the average of the two when we did the LRM and RM the first day? 
What do you take the average of the two and call that a good estimate? And the answer is yes, it's an excellent estimate. It's, it. it's, the, trapezoid, it's the trapezoidal estimate. All right. Why does midpoint random? Okay, um, how much time, you know what, I say that we have three more minutes, and I say I'm going to use it all. All right. Okay. Okay, so conclusion from that previous slide is RAM and LRAM, TRAM is the average of LRAM and RAM. Okay. Trapezoidal estimation is exactly correct when when it when f if f is linear. So, Roberto just said that. I didn't finish it. He goes, when f is a straight line. <laughs> yes. When our function is a straight line. When it is a straight line. When, 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 when f is linear. Okay. So what happens when I do the trapezoidal? Just get a trapezoid. Yeah, you just get a trapezoid. You, get a, you just get a trapezoid. So there's a one more thing.